Okay, so this is just the 2D information, just viewed, you know, in a uh, obliquely. Uh, so just a simple rectangular area with a, a snaking road that's going from the high side of the site down to the low side. Okay, so firstly we establish the heights and we then lift these points into their correct positions above ground. And that gives us something that we can then draw a 3D polyline between these points. Now I kind of call that a spine. And from the spine, we generate some ribs. Okay, and these are picking up the, the shape of what's happening down, you know, at sea level, at the ground level. Okay, then those spines can be dressed with a 3D surface. Okay, and we then start looking at the land adjacent to that and how do we kind of connect our proposed road, if that's what it is, to the to the topography roundabout. Okay, so I've left intentionally left a gap between contours. So this is the 10 meter contour and this is the 5 meter contour. So I've left a gap so that we can do a little exercise in creating the contours that are missing. Okay, so that's the kind of interpolation stage. So we we just draw lines between the contours, divide them by five and then polyline those together and that gives us the contours that are missing. Okay, they're theoretical contours in a way. There could be more land shape in the land than that, but you know, if the information's not there, there's nothing you can do apart from go and survey it properly. Okay, and then the final stage is to kind of patch the the landscape and join onto the to the road. So there's there's a general surface, but then there's the kind of more detailed surface next to the next to our roadway. Okay, so you can see in this area there's a lot more triangulation as we try and get from from the contours to the path. So it's a tricky little exercise, but uh, I think given what I've seen from the house T, I think all of you are more than capable on that. Okay, so if you want to join along, then please do. So in, in AutoCAD, and you know I'm using AutoCAD here because it's it's a a very good stepping stone to using Rhino. Um, so you know AutoCAD is very capable, but Rhino is you know super capable as far as three um, D modeling goes. Okay, if you kind of concentrate on using SketchUp, then there's a lot of capability that you, you that isn't there that you can't necessarily add through add-ons. Um, but you know, going through AutoCAD, you get a good grounding. The people that made Rhino based, used to work for AutoCAD years ago. Okay, so here's the setup. We've got the high side of the site, the road in the middle, the low side. Okay, and usually across a road it's always level. You don't generally, when you're crossing a road, go up or down. You're basically walking straight across. Okay, The road might be sloping downhill, but across the way it's level. And that's the, really the crux of things here, is trying to get that levelness on an object that is going downwards, but also twisting. So, you know, it's a very complicated shape, really. So, if you want to turn that into 3D view, so shift and middle mouse or use the orbit over here and then you can get rid of the get rid of the text and notes here okay and firstly what we need to do is find the middle of the road so you can either you can either offset the left hand side towards the right or the right hand side towards the left. Either way it gives you the same line. Okay, so the offset distance is 2600. So it's offset 2600, enter. I'm going to take the right hand line side and go to the left. Okay, and then 
you'll need to trim off one end and extend the other end. Okay, so extend is EX, enter, you pick your barrier first, enter, pick the object you want to extend, enter to finish. Okay, trimming, we've done plenty of that. I'm just going to use the icon for that one, trim, pick the rectangle around the outside, enter, and chop off the line. Okay, so that's our center of the road. Now you, you need to kind of do it from the middle outwards, what we're going to do. Otherwise you, you kind of end up doing the whole job twice and it's just a lot more work. So having using using just one line is a lot a lot more efficient use of your time. Okay, now if you want to switch on a layer now called spot heights and make that your current layer. Okay, so I've got a point ready to go at the end of each at the end of the line. So at this end of the at this side of the hill, the spot height is going to go up two two zero zero, and at the top of the hill here, this point's going to go up ten two zero zero. Okay, I'd like to show you a, a, a neat way of moving objects which I don't think is necessarily covered in the house tea videos as yet. Okay, so it's using the move command. Okay, if you pick this point first, enter. Now don't pick a base point. Okay, all you need to do is type in zero comma zero comma Two two zero zero. Then press enter twice. And that point should move up two two zero zero. So it's gone. It's not gone anywhere in the x direction. It's not gone anywhere in the y direction. But it's gone two two zero zero in the z direction. Okay. I'm going to do that for another bit of practice. Do that same again with the point over here. So it's move, pick the point, enter, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 10, 200. Enter twice. Okay. If you want to practice again, do you want to lift the, the middle line up for the road? Move, pick the line, enter, 0, 0, 2200, 0, 0. enter twice. Okay, so what that does, it, it, it creates a relative movement. Okay, so it's it's just adding the two two zero zero onto whatever the height of the object is at the moment. It's not going to an what we call an absolute level, and you'll see those kind of described a bit in the the house T site video as well. Okay, right. What we want to do is draw a line now, vertically, from the end of that middle line up to the node. So you'll need to check that you've got node available on your object snaps. It's remembered what I was doing earlier. I've got nearest there as well, but I'm going to switch that off. So just node and end point. Okay. So I want a line. So L enter from end point to node. Okay. So that's the overall height that is the, is the change in level, effectively, from the high point to the low point. Okay, now I'm using a line intentionally so that we don't have to put type any numbers in. Okay, the less the less typing in of distances, coordinates, and numbers and the likes, the the generally the the fewer mistakes you'll make. You'll make. So we try to avoid typing in numbers wherever possible. 
Okay, what we're going to do is divide this into 10 segments. Okay, and then we'll lift the points up by one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, etc. Et so we end up with a, a rising arrangement of points. Okay, but we need to know what one tenth is in height. So let's do that just now. So we divide this line by 10. So div enter pick the vertical line and then type in 10 and enter. Okay, the the nodes here are a bit on the big side. If if you can't see what's going on, let's just reduce the size of those. If you type in pd size maybe make them a thousand instead of 1500. You can see a bit of daylight between them then. That was pd size enter 50 1000 enter okay now all we need to do is just draw a line between a node and the next node or the end of the line and the first node okay so it's just a regular line from end point to node and then if you move that away just move that line away that is our one tenth module. It's our height guide. Okay, so we don't need this stuff now. All we need to keep is that, and so it's the it's the actual height length of that line that's important. We don't need to know the numbers at all. It should be a nice round number. It should be eight hundred. Okay, but. It could be a really nasty number, you know. If you divided that height by seven or nineteen or something like that, chances are this would be an awful number. Okay, now we establish the points on the middle line of the road. So let's divide again. D I V. Enter. Pick the curvy road middle, and we want. 10 divisions again. Okay, so whatever you did for here, 10, you repeat it on here. So if it was 19 there, it'd be 19 here. Okay. Now what we're doing is moving these points up, but each time we'll take one less. So the first time we'll take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. First time we move it, we'll move nine of them. The second time, we'll only move eight. The third time, we'll move seven. The fourth time, we'll move six. Okay, so this is quite a useful little trick. It's using what's called the previous selection set. Okay, so the first move, if you do a window that grabs all nine of those points, you might have to do a couple of windows if you can't grab them properly. We want all nine, so you've got nine total. Press enter. Okay, the base point for the movement is the bottom of that small line. The destination is the top of that small line. Okay, so they've all gone up by one tenth. Okay, then move again but this time type in the letter P for the previous objects. So it's P, enter. Hold shift and take away the last one. Okay, you need to press enter again now. And we're going up by that same height, endpoint to endpoint. Move, P, enter, hold shift, take away the last one, enter, end point to end point, move P, enter, hold shift, pick the last one, enter, 
endpoint to endpoint. Okay, keep going. Move, P, enter, hold shift, take a look at the last one, enter, endpoint to endpoint. Move, P, enter, hold shift, take away the last one, enter, endpoint to endpoint. Not many left now. We're creeping closer to the highest one. So we're moving nicely uphill with these, but these three are still in line with each other. Okay, so it's move, P, enter, hold shift, enter, endpoint to endpoint. Move, P, enter, hold shift, enter, endpoint to endpoint. And the last one, you don't need to do the P bit, so it's just move, pick the last one, enter to enter. Sorry, endpoint to endpoint. Ooh, bit tricky that. Now, if it is a nice round number like this was, you could do that numerically. We'd have moved this one 400, eight, sorry, 800, 1600, 2400, 3200, 4000, etc. So, you know, it's, the choice is yours. You could, you know, try and keep, your, keep yourself right and do, do it by numbers, or that method where there's no numbers needed, needed to be put in, to me, seems a bit easier, a um, bit less typing. Okay. Right, that takes the video to the end of stage. Um, if I go back to here, if anybody's wanting to pick up on this. Okay. If you want to join in now, open road sloping stage one. That should be at the same position. I'll just check that because it. If I open that again myself, yeah, so that's, that's got them all at this height. Okay, so that's stage one. Okay, pretty tricky, but you know, if it's, you know, if there was hundreds of points to move, that would be an extremely laborious method. You know, I think you could kind of chunk it into parts, what have you, but um, you know, it does it does give you a, a better kind of result long term. Okay, the, the white line has done its job, we don't need to see that anymore. Okay, and then we can change layers now to 3D polyline and we're just joining these nodes together. So it's a 3D polyline. Okay, it's not a regular one and it's not a spline Okay, it's a 3D polyline. Okay, so 3D poly is the command. Oh, it's just there actually. It is there. 3D polyline. Okay, it doesn't matter which order you do it in, you can go from high to low or low to high. So we're just joining the nodes now in 3D space. Okay, press enter to finish and it should go pink. Now imagine you were putting a railing on it. You know, this is very handy if you wanted to to make a, a shape run down that to become a railing or a fence or something like that. You know, it's that that is tricky setting out. Okay, the points have done their job now. So we, we can swap layers again now. We can hide the spot heights but make ribs your current layer, 3D ribs. Okay, the next job is done from the top looking down. So if you go to the plan view now, plan and enter twice. Okay, and this is where the nearest object snap comes in very handy. So endpoint, node and nearest are active. We need node in a wee while, so may as well keep that on just now. Okay, I'm just going to get in a bit closer, a bit far away from where I was. And we're going to do polylines, but they always start on the pink line. 
Okay, so it's a polyline, not a 3D polyline. It's a effectively a 2D polyline. Okay, I'm just going to go from this intersection because it's easy to see. So end point. Now it's drawing a polyline that's got width on it there. Let's just cancel that out. So if you click the width option and type zero, enter, enter again. That should kill off the width. Okay, and what you're looking for is a position that's basically kind of perpendicular to the to the arc of the road edge. Okay, so a nearest it will pick up nearest points. Okay, so we go to this side and then you need to go to this side as well. Okay, so we just press enter to bring back polyline. Go from the pink line to nearest. Okay. Now try and find roughly the midpoint of that straight segment. So it's polyline from pink to white. From pink to white. Okay, so there's quite a few of these to draw. Okay, so what we end up with is this kind of, it's like a, a tree ladder, you know, where you just have one piece of wood up the middle and then you nail planks onto it to make a very, very crude ladder. Okay, but do that from the top. You can't do it from an angle. You don't know where you're picking. Okay, so it's polyline. Trying to find roughly the midpoint and roughly perpendicular. Okay, it doesn't have to be fantastically accurate, this. there's quite a lot of them so we'll end up with this kind of millipede looking thing there is an endpoint here so I'm going to find that one first you know, if you had an area where there was more detail you can add more ribs you could say you know if you wanted you know extra ones there's no problem in you know adding more detail wherever you need it this stuff is pretty laborious uh, you know there isn't really any shortcuts available but the the end result is much more believable in in 3d terms I'll show you in a second just just what I mean so we're getting near the top You know, if you're wanting to do this really accurately, you could go from, say, a nearest point to the center of this arc. So that is, you know, definitely perpendicular. But just done by eye is generally fine. Okay, at the top, rather than kind of get too complicated here, if we just go from pink to end point and from pink to end point. Okay, so that should be your spine. I don't think that is stage two. Um, no, stage two is with it surfaced. Okay, so if anybody needs a bit more time drawing their centipede, then we can just hang around there for a second. Okay, your next layer is the 3D road surface. Okay, and you probably would switch off nearest at this point. Turn off nearest, they'll find far too many positions. Okay, so I've just got endpoint and node on now. And 
this is something that I don't think has come up in any of the videos and it's a way of creating 3D faces very quickly. Now I think it might come up in the ones that are coming up next in kind of creating door frames and things but uh, for this if we draw a 3D face so 3F so it's a 3D face okay and 3D faces can have four sides or three this is going to lend itself to doing four sided ones point one two three four okay but you can you can speed things up here because what we'll do is we'll go one two three four three four three four three four etc so you can work your way down something like this very quickly because you don't need this first and the second points again they're already there defined by the previous surface okay so it's only the very first one that you draw the four you pick the four points after that you only need to pick two points okay so the command is 3f I'll just start it again 3f enter 1 2 3 4 but just keep going 3 four three four and it's just leaving the surface behind you okay you can keep it running if you get interrupted it's not a big deal so you just start the command again but then it will be one two three four three four three four sounds like I'm a dance teacher or something one two three four three four and lastly there we go so if you spin it around and have a look at that you know there's something very accurate feeling about that the way it's kind of behaving you can imagine vehicles and bicycles kind of whizzing down that as somebody on a skateboard okay now I'm just going to show you a slightly different thing here I'm just going to draw a long thin rectangle roughly the same width as this road okay and let's see what happens if we sweep that now I'll make the layer uh, let's go for the 3d polyline so we can see the difference in color so I'm going to use the sweep command okay sweep command if you're looking for it is on the solids ribbon okay it's so a sweep pick the object enter I need the, I want the 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 object to run to be centered on this pink line so I need to pick a base point and it's going to be the middle of the top of that rectangle okay now it's asking me to pick the path okay so nice and quick okay but can you you can already you already see how kind of it's diverging from this the road surface we've got you know quite dramatically actually it is the you really cannot control the amount of twist on those kind of objects so really quick you know and you can't I can't fault that but it's you know really not the way a road would be built you know you don't have it like this you know lorries would fall off if they were going around the bend um, you know the road has to be basically level across its width okay so useful to, to show you the difference between the two there okay so we'll just dump that you know what we've got is far more accurate far more believable and it lends itself to creating the footpath as well because these ribs you just kind of extend them and you can create you know curbs and footpaths alongside uh, which is really difficult to do in any other way okay so if you want to if you want to pick up just now then this is this is stage two we've reached now okay and time wise better get moving actually I didn't I was a bit late to start wasn't I with my visit to the loo 
Okay, so back to the home ribbon, we need to deal with the contours now. So let's bring on the contours layer. Okay, and we can hide the 3D polyline. Uh, so if you make contours your, well, don't make contours your current layer, make interpolate points your current layer. Okay, so we can find out these contours in between. Okay, now we don't need, uh, we can leave the white layer, that, that can stay, that can stay. So we'll just hide the middle line and we can hide the ribs as well. We don't need those. Okay, now if you do this from the top view, so plan, enter twice. Okay, and then using normal line, okay, if you put nearest back on your object snaps, okay, and just create some lines from the 10 meter contour down to the 5 meter one. So it doesn't really matter where these lines go, okay. So you can see what I'm trying to do is, is trying to get a kind of a an evenness in the angles. So let's take one from back here, okay? So we can put a few more in. Okay, they don't have to necessarily line up with end points. They can be wherever you want them to be. Okay, maybe take one here. And so this one's gonna splay. I'm kind of filling the gap between the two here. Okay, I need one down the side, end point to end point. And over here we've kind of run out of things that we can click onto. So we just have to leave that bit empty and we'll just carry the carry the contours on and then trim them off using the shape on the ground. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. I've only managed seven lines there, but that's plenty. Okay, now divide each one of these by five. Okay, so div, enter, pick the line you just drew and you want five segments. Okay, if I look at that in 3D you can see what's happening. Okay, so it's just gone down the line, one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, finish. So div, Pick that, five divisions, five divisions, okay, now we need to probably view this from the top again, if you're still viewing from the top that's fine, plan, enter twice. So you notice we haven't done any UCSs at all today. No UCS trickery at all. Okay, and now what we do is join these points and that effectively is our contour. So make contours your current layer. It will be a 2D polyline. Okay, so it doesn't change its height. It's a contour after all. They join positions of equal height. So node node. I'm going to take this one to the corner of the model. Okay, so this is the 8 meter contour and we've run out of things we can click on. You could actually just take it to the white line, it won't drop down. If you go to there, so we have to just kind of decide ourselves where the contour is going to run off to the edge. I think that got the node, did it? No, it just missed the node on that one. Try that again, and I'll just take it to here. And that should be your four interpolated contours. And if I list one of these, they should be nice round numbers on the Z coordinates. Exactly. Every single one of them, 7 meters. 7,000. Everything on this one, 9,000. Okay. 
looking good. Okay, to tidy things up here, you switch off the interpolate layer, and I would just add the edges to this scene because if you wanted to use it as a wireframe, then it does help kind of complete the picture if you can just draw around the edges like that. Just gives it a bit more definition. You know, and you're starting to understand the, the ground shape. So that one should be the the uh, stage three one there. If you if you wanted to join in just now, that is the stage three file. Okay, and the last job is to put some surfaces onto this. And I've made a bit of a start on this already for you. So if you thaw the 3D terrain layer and make it current, you can switch off the white layer and that makes things a bit easier to see. And what we've got to do now is really kind of splice in the bits that are missing. We need to go from general terrain surface to the, the edge of the road surface. So if I just demonstrate that, I'll put the shaded view on so you can see it a bit clearer. And using 3D faces again, so 3F, enter, you, you won't need node now, but nearest could be useful. Yeah, keep nearest on. Okay, so we're basically kind of triangulating the surfaces so we can get a kind of a stitch of the existing terrain into the proposed one. You know, it's pretty laborious but it's not difficult. You know, kind of kind of thing you do with the, you know, some music on, just plugging away, doing your thing. So that you know, the closer we get to the to the to the kind of the key parts of the model, the the more you would use triangles. In the in the other areas, you could get away with larger shapes. So the way we did the path here, you find that there's quite a lot of areas here you could do the same thing. So if I, for example, one, two, three, four, three, four, three, four. And then I've kind of run out of points close by so I'm just going to change to a triangle for the final one. Then. So with that method you can kind of do the easy bits fairly quickly and save your effort for the trickier bits. I'm going to go uphill this time instead of downhill. And it's, it's like kind of doing paper mache. It's a, a, a reasonable analogy. So we've got these kind of wire frames and we're, we're kind of creating bits of paper to cover them. So we have to be careful when we get close to the road. So I'm going to, I'm going to kind of back off and stay back here. So I'm going to do a 3D face kind of across instead. So that I can come down to the road instead. So you can see there's a fair kind of drop down to the road there. You may be fine that you need to do a few bits twice, you kind of do it and then you look at the shape and you think, oh, that's a bit too dramatic or that's too steep or it's too shallow. You know, you can 
then manipulate the triangles or you know just start in a different position to get a different result so over here I kind of need to stay a bit further away from the from the road and that's where the nearest object snap comes in handy that allows you to pick a position anywhere for an end point, there's one, maybe get some bigger ones in here now, start covering a bit more surface, now, there are quite a lot of surface commands but the majority of them won't give you this kind of control, they are automated in a way and uh, difficult to edit, so doing it this way you'll, you'll get a better end result. So we may as well finish this and then so the video at least is complete. It's only going to take another minute or so. You can just about see the clock there. Okay, come back to life. Oh, that was, that was close. Okay, so I've just got one side to do now. Like I said, it's, it is laborious, but it's it's not difficult and laborious. I'm just cutting corners of it here. to guess how much of my life I've spent doing triangles and four-sided faces but uh, I still don't tire of it you know some things you really hate doing but this isn't one of them you know no matter how much of you've done it over the years it's surprisingly kind of therapeutic it's a bit like kind of raking leaves and things it's like something kind of boringly good about it You know, and I could do I could do this, you know, five times in a row, and I would triangulate it in a different way every single time. I, you know, it'd be complete fluke if you if you triangulated this the same way twice. I don't think our brains are meant to do that. So, so that I can't see any real problem areas there. So you, you're looking for situations where where you get something like this if I if I just force it to to look bad okay if I you're looking for that kind of thing where uh oh yeah we're, we're chopped in a bit too much but that might be that might be what you want you might be wanting it to be kind of have a bit more sweep around that bend you might be wanting it to be a bit more dramatic so you can start kind of sculpting the land the way you want it to go. I'll just switch the uh, contours off for a second. See if I can get this to I'm just going to pull. So th these are why 3D faces are great because you can kind of manipulate them to, to what you want them to do. Um, and they're not kind of they have no rules whatsoever 3D faces they're great. Okay and that's our 
finished site. So you may, you know, you may be doing an, an as existing and an as proposed. Um, and so, you know, it may be a case of just kind of ripping a bit out of an existing site and then patching to, to join in. Or like this one, we kind of gone straight to the kind of proposed. But, you know, you can then start taking bits away and say, well, my building generally goes here, but I've got a path that I need to get to the road, or this is the access to the site. And you can start to, you know, imagine, you know, you doing more detail in and around wherever your building is. Okay.